Good evening. I'm Dana Cowley with Contractor Hanford Mission Integration Solutions. We thank you for joining tonight's virtual public meeting, and this meeting is being recorded. Tonight's event is about installing and operating a carbon dioxide removal skid for both the liquid effluent retention facility basin and the effluent treatment facility. This removal skid is a filtering system, and it removes excess carbon dioxide that's generated during the treatment process. It is part of a 60-day public comment period. It began March 31st, and it ends May 29th. We have a few technical details before we begin. We'll be using the chat box feature in Microsoft Teams, so if you just click on that icon, it looks like a thought bubble. It will open up, and then you can use the chat. We've added the link to the Hanford.gov events calendar in the chat. It contains tonight's meeting materials, how to submit your comments, the evaluation for how we did tonight. If you're on the phone only, please go to Hanford.gov. You can find all of this content on the events calendar. And again, just to remind you, we are recording this meeting. For participants who called in using the telephone only, you are muted automatically. If you want to unmute to speak, please just press star six. And then to return to mute, press star six. We ask that you remain on mute during the entire meeting unless you're asking a question. If you please don't put the call on hold. Uh, if you need to go away, just hang up and call back later. You can submit questions anytime using the chat box, but please let us know if you'd like to read your question or if you'd prefer that we read it for you. Lastly, if you have multiple questions, please save them until after everyone has had the opportunity to ask their initial question, and then we can get back to answer second and third questions. And now, with all of that, let's get right to our DOE presenter, Richard Baye. Thank you for that. I'll just wait for the slides to come up. Okay, good evening all. Um, as was noted, my name is Richard Baye. I'm a DOE program manager here at the Office of River Protection for the Hanford site, in particular working under the Tank Farm Programs Division. And as we already stated as well, we're here to discuss a proposed permit modification, a modification of one of our permits here on the Hanford site in support of the effluent treatment facility, which will be via the installation of a carbon dioxide removal skid. And we'll get to some of the lower level detail here in the, the subsequent slides. But with that, we can go to the next slide, please. All right, and for folks that have been joining us here, we, we do always try to take the opportunity to provide um, some context on one of the uh, main activities ongoing here at the Hanford site that we're excited about. And you'll hear that, hear that referred to as the DF, DF law or the direct bead law activity waste configuration. And it's through this DF law program that DOE will take a select grouping of individual projects, facilities, and infrastructure upgrades, all in an effort to retrieve, treat, and immobilize low activity waste into glass. So we'll just take one moment to try to make sense of the graphic here. It's a little bit busy, but if we start kind of at the top middle, the AP tank farm will be where uh, waste will be stored prior to pretreatment. The pretreatment will occur at the tank side cesium removal or TISCR you see uh, at the top left in that blue call out. And the TISCR system will be used to remove solids and cesium to pretreat the waste. We then see we have an orange flow path leaving the AP tank farm after that pretreatment at the tank side cesium removal. And if we follow that orange flow path, you can barely see the wording there saying pretreated low activity waste or law. That enters the waste treatment and immobilization plant footprint, and then you see that orange flow path terminating at the low activity waste or law facility. So that pretreated waste will then be um, mixed with glass formers and heated so that it is vitrified into a glass waste form. And at that point, we'll have glass. If we just follow the glass for one moment, we recognize that it's then transported and for disposal at the integrated disposal facility. So that'll be the purple call out you see at the top left. And that kind of takes us through the uh, tank waste storage, pretreatment, uh, treatment and disposal. But if we just focus our attention back to the low activity waste facility, um, we see we have an additional 
uh, flow path exiting the facility in white there. And that's a function of the glass making process creating secondary liquid effluent. So that secondary liquid effluent would then be routed to the effluent management facility, that bright blue call out, so that we can reduce down the waste volume of secondary liquid effluent generated. And any remaining liquid waste would then be transferred through that longer white flow path to the facilities we'll be talking about tonight, which are the liquid effluent retention facility and the effluent treatment facility. All right, so next slide, please. And this is a continuation of uh, the direct fetal activity waste discussion, kind of just put some salient points in narrative form. But again, chemical and radioactive waste is stored here on the Hanford site. That's um, shown to you as this typical tank graphic you see to the side, where we have a, um, a liquid fraction shown to you in blue and then a solid fraction shown in yellow. It's important to note that during the, the direct feedlot activity waste configuration, we'll be targeting the liquid fraction of the tank waste, select tank waste. And again, it's through this DF law that uh, DOE will safely, effectively, and efficiently treat Hanford tank waste to vitrify and immobilize within glass. As we noted prior, uh, secondary waste will be generated as a result of the glass making process that will be occurring at the Waste Treatment and Immobilization Plant, or WTP. And then, as we noted as well, uh, we'll be using the Liquid Effluent Retention Facility, or LERF, and then the 200 area ETF, Effluent Treatment Facility, excuse me, ETF, um, will be used to manage and treat the secondary liquid waste. Okay, next slide, please. And uh, this will begin probably a, a, a few set of slides here that will we'll drill down ultimately to the facility we'll be discussing tonight. So this one starts at a pretty high level. We see here the Hanford site displayed with its general location within the state of Washington. We see the Hanford site primarily composed of a series of areas, um, all called out for you, but we'll be focusing our attention uh, to the 200 East area, kind of right in the middle of the, the Hanford site there. And then you see the general call out for the LERF and 200 area ETF and its uh, relative location. Next slide, please. This takes us one step uh, lower. This is an aerial view of this grouping of facilities, the liquid effluent retention facility or LERF. You see at the top of the photo, it's currently comprised of uh, three operational surface impoundments or basins. And you see um, the black floating cover that sits atop the liquid waste volume. And then kind of in the, uh, the dotted call out for the liquid effluent retention facility, you see the excavation for the fourth uh, surface impoundment, also referred to as Basin 41, that's currently being installed as we speak. Um, at the bottom of the photo, we see the effluent treatment facility and its uh, building systems and structures. Uh, and that's the focus of the discussion tonight will be on the ethylene treatment facility. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so here we go. We've drilled down to the 200 area ethylene treatment facility. Understanding its function is to treat liquid waste from Hanford site sources. And again, um, calling back to that uh, operations will expand in the very near future to include the management of a DF law secondary liquid waste. And the, the graph of the photo you see presented here is a, um, a view of the primary treatment train within the process floor of the ETF building. And uh, we wanted to show that to you because it'll be a point of discussion, the primary treatment train for uh, following slides. So next, next slide, please. Okay. So the slides prior have kind of provided a lot of background. Um, as we've worked our way towards the facility we'll be discussing tonight and kind of its components. Uh, really the purpose of tonight's discussion and the permit modification that we're proposing is due to the fact that we have received the composition of the WTP DF law secondary liquid waste stream. Um, it was reviewed and found to have high concentrations of dissolved inorganic carbon. So that dissolved inorganic carbon will require additional treatment over what's currently existing at the ETF. 
And so these bullets here highlight some of the uh, some of the important important points for that sentence. So we talked about high concentration of these dissolved inorganic carbon. Um, why is that an issue? Well, first bullet there notes that in, these inorganic carbon species uh, have the potential to uh, negatively impact the efficiency of one of our existing unit operations, that being the ultraviolet oxidation process at the ETF. So we'd want to manage it um, so it doesn't negatively impact that operation. The inorganic carbon species uh, can be shifted to carbon dioxide as you adjust the pH. And we currently do um, uh, treat or purge CO2 carbon dioxide within the existing ETF primary treatment train by using a degasification column. So um, really the, the purpose of the modification is on that last bullet there where we will be proposing the installation of a CO2 removal skid. It's an engineered assembly to provide additional removal capability for CO2 within the ETF's primary treatment train. Okay, next slide, please. And just trying to understand the regulatory framework we're working under, um, we understand that the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RICRA, provides Hanford with a dangerous waste permit that governs the dangerous waste treatment, storage, and disposal. The Washington State Department of Ecology is our regulator, and we are currently operating under Revision 8C of this RICRA permit. Um, based on the, the issues uh, presented on the prior slide, uh, it was determined that changes would be needed to the existing Hanford RICRA permit, again, to adjust address those technical concerns in the previous slide. Um, so we would we would need to uh, propose changes to the to the RICRA permit. And then the last bullet there notes that we DOE are are the permittees in this particular instance, our contractor being Washington River Protection Solutions are proposing a class two permit modification to this uh, grouping of facilities, the LERF and 200 area ATF that you will sometimes see referred to as operating unit group three within the RICRA permit. And next slide, please. Okay, so this provides some um, lower level detail on that CO2 removal uh, capability that we're proposing. Again, a CO2, a CO2 removal skid is proposed for installation. We would like to install that prior to UVOX treatment for the um, negative impact to the efficiency that we described earlier. This system can be pipe bypassed as needed, and then the purged or removed CO2 from the system would be sent to ETF's existing vessel off-gas system. And this engineered skid, this removal skid, would primarily consist of um, the heart and soul being these four membrane contactors, but it would also have a blower with a variable frequency drive, pH and CO2 analyzer, so we can measure those particular uh, parameters, and then all the associated electrical plumbing piping instrumentation on, for this skid housed within a metal frame with a spill pan. And for the graphic that you see here, this kind of just provides um, uh, the philosophy for how the CO2 removal will occur. So we talked about uh, the four membrane contactors being kind of the, the heart and soul of this removal skid. So we see here an example of one of the membrane contactors. And we would be introducing waste into the membrane contactor with a higher concentration of CO2. Uh, we see the, uh, these membrane contactors have an internal assembly of, of what's referred to as these hollow fiber tubes which have microscopic pores that you can see in the zoom in. So as the waste flows around the exterior of those hollow fiber tubes, again, with a higher concentration of CO2, we would be introducing a sweep gas within the tubes. That sweep gas um, and the, the proximity of the liquid in the gas phase would then have a partial pressure that drives um, the CO2 through the membrane uh, pores to be swept away within with that sweep gas. So then you would ultimately have exiting the carbon, um, the contact membrane, excuse me, a lower concentration of CO2 because it was it would be swept away 
within the tubes in that sweep gas. Okay, uh, next slide, please. And this provides a um, kind of a frame of reference for our existing primary treatment train. Uh, probably want to call out uh, the UVOX box that you see kind of right in the middle of the primary treatment train. And then the degas column at the back end of that first row. So um, the UVOX call out is important because again, we want to, to manage the, excuse me, the um, negative impact to its unit operations. And then the call out for the degas, I'm just mentioning that because that is the existing CO2 removal capability that we currently have. So if we just take a mental snapshot here for a moment and go to the next slide. We see here, this would be the after for the proposed installation. Again, uh, installation of a CO2 removal skid ahead of the UV ox, and that being um, the primary function for uh, tonight's discussion, this, the, this installation of the CO2 removal skid. So you can see where that fits into the, uh, uh, the flow sheet here. Next slide, please. And then again, in further effort, just to provide some context here of, of what it would look like, we have a computer rendering that's shown to you here. So before jumping over to those arrows, just taking a moment to maybe call out the, the components here, we see the four membrane contactors. Those are those gray cylinders in the skid. Um, to the side and on, off in yellow, we have uh, the electrical electrical components and then those that pH um, the the pH sensor we see the blower down below and then all of this being housed within uh, it's in a skid assembly so you see all this housed within that uh, the drip pan down below and then just focusing in on the arrows the middle arrow is probably where we'll start we see we introducing waste into this skid. Again, the introduced waste would have a higher concentration of CO2 that would flow in the system through these membrane contactors as we explained. Um, the waste then exiting the membrane contactors would have a lower concentration of CO2. And where did that CO2 go? Um, as we mentioned, that would be swept away and you see the yellow arrow for the removed CO2 being sent to the existing ETF vessel off gas system or VOG. And uh, next slide, please. So the um, information explained tonight um, is a modification to a proposed modification to our RICWA permit. You can see here this kind of provides a, a, a viewing of the exact addenda that were modified as a result of this proposed modification, and that includes addendum B for the waste analysis plan. Addendum C for the process information, addendum I for the inspection requirements. And so those will have um, some more detail. We do encourage the public to refer to the Hanford Dangerous Waste Permit Change Notice for a full description of the proposed changes. Next slide, please. And this one will probably wrap it up uh, in summary before we have questions here, but just uh, wanted to again reiterate the public process. So this is a proposed class two permit modification to a particular section of the RICWA permit for the LERF and 200 area ETF. It does have a 60 day public comment period that's currently open ongoing and will run through the 29th of May. Um, there's, we do encourage you to submit formal comments um, preferably through the electronic means with the hyperlink shown down below, but certainly more than welcome to also submit um, physical uh, comments through the address shown below as well. And with that, uh, we'll go to the next slide. All right, Richard, thank you very much for that in-depth presentation. I always learn something. And uh, it's time to go to questions. I see there was a question from Dan Solis, but that was already answered. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to answer, ask a question? Hit star six to unmute. We'd love to answer your questions. Oh, 
All right, not hearing anyone. Um, Dan Solis, do you have another question for us? Yes, I do. Yeah, thanks for the detailed in information on how the how the system works. I'm not quite clear what, where the where the CO2 goes. It goes to a bog. I don't know what that is. And also, if you could give me some background on on the the, the, the budgetary process, um, you got you got the information that you had too much CO2, and then you took a series of actions. And can you tell me how they were how they were budgeted, how long it took, and how much this costs? Or maybe you're not the right folks to ask. Um, for that second part, this might not be the right forum for that. Uh, we, we can try to answer it, see if it scratches the itch. But we'll start with your first question there on, on the vessel off gas. So that is an engineered structure um, for, for, for off gas. So um, if we can maybe go to the flow sheet slide, one of those flow sheet slides with the, the boxes. So d different unit operations here have, um, you know, they either occur in some type of process vessel and that vessel will be under a negative vacuum. So we're, we're removing any type of off gas into this engineered off gas uh, system, which will consist of, you know, filtration and a stack before that is re uh, released to the environment. So. Um, that's the vessel off gas system. And then on your second question, if you might want to try asking that one more time, I know you had a, a budget question there, but maybe a little bit more than that. Okay, I, I hadn't heard of this before. And, and I guess you, you, you decided that you needed this when you did an analysis. And after you got the analysis, you decided you needed this skid. So I wonder if you could take right. me through how long, how long it took to figure that out, what the costs were and did you have to go through a budget cycle to get it, or did you have some money left over from something else, or just kind of give me a sense of how this all came about? And for this one, I'm going to ask if we can go to the the purpose slide or purpose of the modification. Probably a, a few prior, uh, maybe two more. Sorry, I'll pull it up. Um, Yep, this one right here. Uh, so like the leading paragraph shows, um, the composition of this new waste stream was reviewed. And so uh, probably a little bit of history for for waste to be received at this uh, facility, the LERF and 200 area ETF, uh, the generator, so in this case, the waste treatment plant um, has to notify um, the receiver, which in this case would be us, the facility, of the composition of waste to ensure that it meets our, our waste acceptance criteria. So uh, we've talked a lot about the DF process, DF law process being um, something we're working towards. So we have not received this waste stream as of yet, but the generator has enough knowledge to be able to determine the composition of their waste stream. And so in, um, in about the 2018-2019 the timeframe, the waste treatment plant provided uh, us a certified waste profile, and we were able to then perform our views and determine the acceptability of this waste stream and or any required changes to be able to accept this waste stream. So that's what you're seeing here today, kind of the, the process being worked um, with receiving a waste profile, reviewing it, determining what changes might be needed, if any. And then in terms of the budget process, this was a, a process that was allowed to, to be performed uh, without any, uh, I, I think you may be referring to maybe a capital process for some of our larger projects. This, this did not have to go through that process. If, if that's the intent of that question. We were able to manage it with our existing operating and maintenance funds to be able to um, design and and hopefully install this system. Okay, thank you. That's that's pretty impressive, and, and for something that takes four years to, to to develop. And I wish you every piece of luck possible on it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, Dan. Appreciate the, the good luck wishes, and thank you for the thorough answers, uh, Colleen. Do we have any other questions in the chat? Yes, uh, Maya Burke has a question. 
Um, can other gases besides CO2 be removed by the skin? Yeah, so there, um, it's dependent on the chemistry. Um, for example, um, dissolved oxygen may be able to be removed by the skid, but um, as we stated in the prior comment question, yeah, we, we reviewed the waste composition and found that uh, th this is the only um, molecule chem chemical of concern. Um, so we would be shifting the the inorganic carbon to CO2 to be able to then um, filter it for removal from the waste stream. So CO2 would be our only um, targeted chemical or molecule of concern. Thanks for the question, Maya. Um, any other questions? Star six to unmute to ask your question. and not hearing anything. Colleen, anyone else in the chat? I don't see any in the chat, and right now I don't see any raised hands. All right, well, we'll give just another minute or two. We always want to answer all the questions that we can. I see that we have a few members of the public who have joined us tonight, and we always appreciate your participation. So before we wrap up for the evening, let's do uh, one last call. If you're on the phone only and you'd like to ask a question, all questions are welcome. Just hit star pound, star six to unmute, star six. <laughs> And not hearing anything on the phone, we'll check in the chat one more time, Colleen. Nothing new in the chat. Well, it sounds like we've done a good job on your part, Richard, of explaining this. So we will conclude our meeting slightly early. On behalf of DOE, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Details about tonight's meeting include how to submit your comments. Just go to hanford.gov. You can find the comment period on the events calendar and the email address is right there. And we'd welcome your feedback on this meeting. Tell us how we did. There's a link in the, to the evaluation form in the chat. So we thank everyone for preparing, coming, participating in this meeting. It's a very important part of the permitting process and we appreciate you. Have a nice, nice evening and we will see you again. Bye-bye.